Yes, you can use a Tesla charging station to charge your non-Tesla electric vehicle. However, you need an adapter to be able to do that. We're gonna take a look at some of the more popular Tesla to J1772 adapters available on the market today. We're gonna to offer some tips on how to use them properly and also how to use them safely because that's a big concern. But first, please click that subscribe button tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Now here in North America, all non-Tesla electric vehicles use the industry standard J1772 connector for level one and level two charging. Level one charging is charging from a regular 120 volt household outlet. Now you can charge every electric car from a regular household outlet, but it will take really long because charging from a household outlet, you only get between three and five miles of range per hour. Works for some plug-in hybrids that don't have really long driving range, but for full electric vehicles, most people are gonna to wanna to charge from a 240 volt source. Now I say most people, because there are some people that live just fine charging from 120 volt source. I know I'm gonna get comments here in the comment section that are gonna say, what are you talking about? I charge my Tesla from a regular household outlet and it does work for some people. I think the majority of the people are gonna need uh, faster charging, which is level two charging. And with level two charging, you charge from a 240 volt source, whether hardwired or a plug-in unit. Um, a 240 volt plug would be something you'd use for say, a electric kitchen range or an electric dryer. And on level two charging, an electric vehicle can charge up to somewhere between 40 and even 50 miles of range per hour. So it's a significant increase from level one charging. Now, Tesla vehicles use a proprietary connector. They don't use the J1772 here in North America. And along with every Tesla, Tesla provides an adapter that allows people to charge their Tesla from a charging station that uses the J1772 connector. And here it is right here. This is what was provided with my Tesla, um, the Tesla to J1772 adapter. Um, no, actually the J1772 to Tesla adapter. Um, it's the other way around when we talk about these later. Um, but this adapter allows me to plug this into a J1772 connector and then plug it into my Tesla so I can charge my Tesla on a charging station other than a Tesla branded one. Now, besides Tesla, the other manufacturers don't provide an adapter that allows you to charge their cars from a Tesla charging station. Only Tesla gives you this adapter. So, but they are available, and those are what we're gonna talk about here today. If you have a non-Tesla EV and you wanna use a Tesla charging station, um, you'd have to buy one of these adapters. So we're gonna go over some of your options today talk about which ones provide what type of current and what are the safety precautions you need to consider when you're using them. So as I said, this is the connector that Tesla provides to allow their customers to charge from a non-Tesla charging station. Now, if you lose this, Tesla sells them on their website for $95. Uh, and these are rated to deliver up to 80 amps. Now there are alternatives online, like this one here made by Lectron. This is $15 less, and it looks identical uh, to, the te to the Tesla one. I've used it, it works fine. The only thing you have to consider is that this is only safe up to 60 amps. Now, that shouldn't be a problem for most Teslas because all, all the Teslas that are sold today, the maximum amperage that the car can pull is 48 amps. So there's no problem using a 60 amp adapter on that. However, there are some older Model S and Model X Teslas that have what Tesla used to call the dual onboard charger option. And those could take up to 80 amps. Some of them could take up to 72 amps. Some of the earlier ones could take up to 80 amps. I suppose that's why Tesla makes these with a maximum of 80 amps. So no matter what Tesla uses this, they don't have to worry about it pulling more current than this thing's capable of handling. So if you do buy one of these online, like this Electron, which as I said, works just fine and it's 15 bucks less than the one Tesla order, uh, sells, make sure you're not charging one of the older Teslas that have the dual onboard charger option because 
you're gonna have a problem. It's, it's gonna, more current's gonna pass through this than it can accept, and that's not gonna be good for the connector and possibly for your car. So make sure you pair the right uh, connector, right adapter with the right amperage that you're gonna be using uh, with any adapter that you use for any electric vehicle charging. So let's move on to the real reason we're here today, to discuss charging non-Tesla EVs from Tesla charging stations. Now, I wanna be clear, a non-Tesla electric vehicle cannot use a Tesla supercharger with any adapter. Even if you were to make an adapter, it wouldn't work. That's because superchargers have a communication process where you plug the vehicle in, it communicates with the supercharger, it says, okay, I'm a Tesla, I am allowed to accept energy from you. The charging station says, yes, you're a Tesla, here you go, and it activates and starts charging the vehicle. A connector would have to be incredibly sophisticated and have electronics built into it to fake the, out the Tesla charging station. No one's been able to do that yet. I don't really anticipate anybody being able to do that anytime soon. So we just wanna be clear here, you can't use adapters to use Tesla superchargers. What you can use these adapters for is Tesla wall connectors, like I have on the wall here right behind me. A Tesla mobile connector that comes with Teslas. Let's say you bought a Tesla and you use that to charge your Tesla, but now you just bought another electric vehicle, one that's not made by Tesla, and you don't wanna go out and buy a charging station because you have a Tesla wall connector or a mobile connector that works just fine. What you'd wanna get is a Tesla to J1772 adapter, and that will allow you to charge your Tesla. Um, besides charging at home, it also gives you access to the thousands of Tesla destination charges. Tesla installs their destination chargers, which are level two chargers, all at, across the country at hotels, bed and breakfasts, restaurants, ski resorts, all type of destinations. There's literally thousands of them all over the country. And it's one of the things that Tesla does really well. They go out there and build out the infrastructure. They don't wait for it to come to them. Uh, the thing about all of these charging stations, the, the, the destination charging stations, they don't have that communication process where it talks to the vehicle, it says, yeah, you're a Tesla, okay, we'll give you energy. It just delivers energy. So if you have the right adapter, you can charge your electric vehicle on a Tesla destination charger. I used to use uh, this Lectron uh, adapter all the time with my BMW i3. And uh, recently I drove a, a Mini Cooper SE from New Jersey all the way down to North Carolina. And when I was staying down in North Carolina, they had a, a Tesla destination charger at the hotel. Well, that's why I stayed there, because I had a charger. And I used this adapter to charge the Mini Cooper SE overnight and it worked perfectly. So there are definite use cases for these adapters. Uh, if you do a lot of traveling, if you're on the road frequently, they're not too expensive. It makes sense to buy one, throw it in the back of the car because you never know when you're gonna need it. And there's so many Tesla destination chargers out there. It's definitely convenient if you need to plug in to have one of these. So basically, these connectors open up a whole nother network of public chargers for you if you have a non-Tesla electric vehicle. You do have choices if you'd like to buy a Tesla to J1772 adapter, as there are a few companies making them. First one we're gonna take a look at is from a company called Lectron. This is a 40 amp Tesla to J1772 connector, meaning it can safely deliver 40 amps to the car. Now, very few electric vehicles that aren't Tesla can accept more than 40 amps, but they are out there. Uh, especially the newer cars like Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen ID.4, the Audi e-tron, that's not very new, but that can accept more than 40 amps. All those vehicles can accept 48 amps. So if you were to use a Tesla wall connector, for instance, like mine here, that can deliver 48 amps, and the car that can accept 48 amps, what you're gonna have is in the middle of that, a connector that isn't rated at 48 amps. So you really want to know what the amperage that your car can accept is when you buy one of these. Now you can, if you had a 40 amp one, 
you could derate the charging in your vehicle. Most electric vehicles allow you to dial down the draw so you can go in the vehicle settings and say, okay, only give me 40 amps and then there wouldn't be a problem. But you know, it seems like a lot of work and you might forget it. So I recommend that when you do get one of these, you pair the power it can deliver with the power your vehicle can accept just so there's no mistake. I mean, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt if you used it once or twice, but if you use this frequently, at some point, the internals of this is probably gonna melt and you're gonna have a problem with the connector and your car even maybe. So definitely make sure you know how much power your EV can accept, how much power the charging station can deliver and make sure you don't have an adapter in the middle that can accept and deliver less than what the car and the charger can provide. Now, as I said, there aren't a lot of electric vehicles out there that can accept more than 40 amps. So the basic 40 amp unit that Electron provides probably is gonna be suitable for many owners. Like for me with my BMW i3 or the Mini Cooper SE that I just recently had a road trip with, they can't accept more than 7.7 .7 kilowatts. So this would be fine for that. And if you have an EV that isn't, doesn't accept more than 10 kilowatts, this is a pretty good choice. It's, it's $149.99. Uh, a couple things I do like about it, it has a locking cover on the Tesla connector side. Most of these other uh, competing brands don't have anything that protects the, uh, the Tesla end. I always like the, the ends of the connectors to be protected when you're not using them. You don't want dirt and dust or water to somehow get in there. And on the J1772 side, it does have this rubber uh, cover that fits over it nicely. Um, and one other thing you'll notice here on the top of the, the button of the connector, not sure if you can see it, I'll zoom in later, there's a little hole in the, in the button. That's to allow you to use a little lock, put it in there, and you can lock the connector while it's charging. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, these aren't cheap, as I mentioned, and uh, somebody can unplug your car and steal this if it's not locked. Some electric vehicles do lock the connector to the car while it's charging, but many don't. So you don't want to have this out in the public somewhere or overnight at a hotel somewhere in a parking lot unlocked. Uh, these little locks are available for like four or five bucks. You can get them online in plenty, plenty of places. So if you do buy one of these, I definitely recommend that you get one of those little locks. That's not really strong. If someone really wants this thing, they can break this lock and take it off but it is one extra level of protection that maybe somebody doesn't want to go through the hassle of really fussing with it to try to break the lock off and, and, and steal your connector. Um, but the Electron uh, is a pretty good choice. It, uh, I've used it uh, you know, quite a few times, works really well. Uh, it seems like it's made pretty well and uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, you know, advise somebody not to get it. It has, seems to have pretty good ratings on, on Amazon. It's like, I think 4.5 out of five stars. So most of the customers that have them seem to be happy with them. Next up is a connector from a different company called Tesla Tap. Now Tesla Tap is actually, um, they lay claim to being the original Tesla to J1772 inventors uh, that, that, that developed this first and all of the other companies that make them afterwards, they claim copied their product. Um, I, I tend to believe them because I know they've been around for quite a few years now. Uh, I've seen their website out there at least four years ago, and um, I don't know if anybody else was making them b before them, but it's a, it's a very robust product. It doesn't have the cover for the, uh, the Tesla side, like I said, like the Electron has, uh, but it seems like it's made very well. And this is safety certified. This product here is UL listed uh, and the Electron isn't. Uh, so that's definitely something to consider. It also has the hole in the, the connector tab for the lock. They actually use the exact same uh, con J1772 connectors. It's the exact same ones used on, on both products. Uh, it's just the uh, Tesla end is a little different. Tesla Tap offers this adapter in three different power levels. A 40 amp unit for $139.95, a 50 amp one for $169.95 and an 80 amp one for $239.95. Now, uh, there's not too many use cases for the 80 amp version of this uh, because there just aren't 
many or any electric vehicles that use the J1772 connector that can accept 80 amps today. Uh, there may be some coming out there in the future, but for now, there really aren't any. So as far as I'm concerned, the 50 amp unit is really the highest power that anybody today would really need to get. And it does make sense to consider the 50 amp unit if you have an electric vehicle like the ones I mentioned earlier that are capable of accepting 48 amps and using a Tesla station that can deliver 48 amps. Some of the Tesla destination chargers can even deliver 80 amps, but you don't have to worry about it your car pulling more than the amps that it can accept because the car always decides how much power it takes in. So let's say you had a, uh, a Mustang Mach-E that can accept 48 amps and you used a, a 50 amp Tesla to J1772 connector on a Tesla destination charger that can deliver 80 amps. It, the, the charger is not going to try to send 80 amps to the car. It's only going to send 48 amps, which is what the car is calling for. And in the case of having the Tesla Tap 50, you'd be able to accept the full amount of power. Now, the difference between how fast the car is going to charge on the 40 amp unit and the 48 amp unit isn't really going to be that much. It's not going to make that much of a difference. I wouldn't recommend getting the 50 amp unit for that. It's more of the safety aspect of it. You don't have to worry about derating the power in the car or, or having any issues if you forget to do that. Um, so basically, you know, if you do have an electric vehicle that can accept more than 40 amps and you want to get one of these adapters, I, I think the uh, Tesla Tap 50 uh, that can safely accept up to 50 amps is probably the best choice for you. If you have an EV that can accept less than 48 amps, 40 amps or 32 amps, 30 amps, whatever it is, then a 40 amp adapter, either from Electron or Tesla Tap, would be fine as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't see any safety issue. They both seem like they're robust units if you're using them with the right amount of current. Um, they both have the nice caps on the on the J1772 side. Electron does have the cover on the uh, Tesla end, which I kind of like. Um, but you know, as long as you know that you have to try to keep this clean and 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 uh, free from water or whatever, um, you're cognizant of that. A lot of people put these in little ba bags and put them in the back of their cars. I think you're going to be okay with that. Uh, again, as I said, um, I recommend getting the little lock, regardless of which of these you get just so nobody steals this thing on you. Uh, and, uh, and that definitely can happen. They're not cheap. People that know what these are uh, do know that, you know, you can probably just unplug it and take them. So unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to do that. And finally, we get the honor of introducing a brand new Tesla to J1772 adapter to the market. This has never been available before. It's just being launch, launched by Tesla Tap. It actually is basically the same thing as these connectors, except in a compact form. Um, it's available in either a 40 or 60 amp version and it eliminates the need to have the cable in the middle and, and kind of the bulky side of these. These work fine. Uh, it's just this new sleek, small package. It's almost the size as the uh, adapter that Tesla provides to allow Tesla vehicles to charge on uh, J1772 chargers. Now this does the, uh, the opposite. It allows J1772 equipped vehicles to charge on Tesla stations. Um, really sleek design that Tesla Tap came out with. Now, the thing is, it's not cheap. The, <laughs> the 40 amp version costs $199.95 and the 60 amp version costs $259.95. So basically, it doesn't do anything that these don't do. It's just that it costs a lot more, uh, but it is kind of cool and sleek and small. And one of the things I noticed that's pretty interesting is um, like these have the lock on the J1772 connector, this one has two locks. It has one on the top where you would have the J1772 connector lock. And then there's one on the bottom that locks the Tesla connector to it. So you can't get um, unlocked either way. On these, uh, the lock just prevents the, uh, the, the adapter from being stolen. But somebody that walks by can unplug the Tesla connector and it, while the car won't be, the, the adapter won't be stolen, you, you, you stop charging. They can, they can interrupt your charging session, maybe use the charger for their car. We've seen that 
um, many times online where people unplug people's electric vehicles to plug in their car because they're more important than the first car that was there. Um, but with this adapter, you wouldn't be allowed to do that because you can lock both sides, um, which, is, which is pretty neat. Um, haven't actually had the chance to use this yet. I just got it, as I said. These, the, this, this is just becoming available now from uh, Tesla Tap. I think this is the second unit that was produced. <laughs> so the owner of the company kept the first unit for himself, but he said this is the second one and they're just making this available on the Tesla Tap website. Uh, so that's basically your options for charging non-Tesla vehicles on Tesla charging stations. Yes, you can do it, um, but not on superchargers. I know some people may have come to this video thinking that I was going to show them how to use Tesla superchargers. Unfortunately, nobody can show you how to do that. It simply can't be done. Um, are these adapters worth the money? That's really a personal decision. Uh, you know, I wouldn't run out and get one if you don't typically need a charger uh, to charge on the road. If, if your electric vehicle has enough range and you very rarely find yourself charging on the road, um, you probably don't need it. Uh, if you do a lot of driving and you frequently stretch the range of your vehicle, so you're looking for public chargers, or you just do a lot of road trips, it might not be a bad idea to pick up one. But remember, make sure you match the amperage to the amperage that your car is going to accept. Because we don't want to see you overdrawing these and pulling too much current through them. Bad things happen when, when you do that. And we certainly wouldn't want to see that happen to any of our followers here. So that's it for today. Please don't forget click the subscribe button and tap that notification bell, and we'll see you next time.